I put it like this. What good is a man if he's in a relationship and his women, his woman and his children, his children are not fed and satisfied and his woman's not happy? You right. we perceive it as as if we failed. A failure. Yeah. You're, so, it's a failure. So whereas uh, you know, a woman a woman will um fail miserably and somehow he didn't make me happy. Yeah. Just and then and then her 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 girlfriends go. That's right, girl. He should he didn't pay attention to you. So You're a strong he, woman. He can't handle a strong, can't handle, you just, independent, uh, disruptive, and, toxic woman. Woo, bro. It it you know it, it's. Hey yo, what's up, Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, we have comedian and good friend Ty Barnett. He's here as we discuss. Do men talk too much about their feelings? When you catch up, when you catch your girl cheating, dating selfish people, what happens when things, when you get a little older and when how you should learn old. this yeah. wisdom sooner? Uh, how much you can, can you blame yourself for when you, when somebody breaks up? So, um, this is a goodie, man. A good Ty's a good friend, and we always chop it up good. We always, you know, yeah, get to kind of pontificate. It was, it was a super about. fun one, man. We did a lot of technique, and if you love yeah. the technique and all the stuff we do on the show, uh, patreon.com slash man school two hundred two. Get us, man. Yeah. Sign up, please. Get, sign up so we can keep doing this, bro. If you think you like what we're doing. Please support us, man. Yeah, we do a bonus episode after every show, and this week Dante and I chop it up, we're doing a little technique and answering some listener mail, giving you some more advice. patreoncom slash manschool 202 and also I do uh, relationship advice as well, uh, consultations. Advice from Harry at gmail.com is the email if you want to contact me, and if you want to go to Dante's, uh, you can go to dantenero.com slash consult. So uh, enjoy the show. Click, click consult. Click, click consult. consult. I'm sorry. DanteNero.com. Click consult. Enjoy the yeah. show. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, yo, yo. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Uh... It's a, it's a special show, people. Um, and here's why. We got a special guest. Now, I might have said that five, six hundred times before, but this time, I mean it. Uh, because we have a special guest. But before that, I got to say what's up to my partner in crime. Uh, my partner in power. Mm-hmm. Give it up for mm-hmm. Harry T. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. You can't prove those crimes, by the way. The yeah. statute of limitations on most of those have run out. Fair enough. So that's why I'm here. All of them? Yeah. Stop snitching. Yeah, all right. My bad. throw that message out there. Stop snitching. My bad. My bad. Uh, let me introduce our guest. Uh, dope friend of the show. Friend of mine. Uh, beast of a comic. Good dude. Uh, successful marriage. Successful comic. Uh, I don't know how he does it. I don't know. I don't even know how he does it. It's just... It's just one, he just so much winning, so much winning. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Harry's just mad because I snuck in with my Donald you're, Trump. You're, yeah, I mean, you close your eyes, you could think you think it's him. You think my he's doing a campaign hilarious. speech. So much winning. Um, <laughs> uh, Ty, what's going on? Bro? How you what's doing, going bro? on, fellas? How y'all doing? Again, uh, my fault. Uh, I was out doing. Shut up! Nobody uh, knows. Nobody knows okay. you was late. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nobody knows you almost no one, stood us no, up. It's no fine. one knows you were off by three hours. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, it's due to the right. due to the time coast difference. On the coast. Oh, they know now. The, the they listeners know now. are not so aware. They're I'll not aware. They had no idea. They know now, you. but they didn't know before. But whatever. Well, uh, thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it, man. You know, um, to answer your question a little bit, man, uh, how I work some of this stuff out is time. Uh, being older, bro, I was actually having this conversation with a friend of mine the other day. I was like, man, the shit that I used to get into in my 20s. Yeah. No way now. bro. No, no, no. I ain't got the time, the energy, the mentality for it at all, bro. Or the testosterone. I've been... Uh... Oh. I've been big on that. I've been big on that heavy. Like I, I just had a. Uh, I've been talking about this shit heavy. I just had the, uh, the uh, what is it? The 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 what am I? It's like a, uh, implant. It's like a little implant. You do. I take it. You wear your eyes open up. You don't know. 
No. So have you ever had your you ever had your testosterone? I am an advocate. So have you ever had your testosterone tested? No, I have not. Mm. I have not. I, I want to tell you, but I, then I don't want you to go out and get an orgy. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> It, it can happen. It can happen. You get that. You get that testosterone back to when you're over nine hundred, like when you were twenty. Uh, I don't, man. I don't know. I mean, there's a part of me. Well, that, that's that's why I'm telling you. I do know. <laughs> uh, it's a different uh, game. It's definitely a different game. I mean, yeah. um, so let's they, talk about that off the show. Well, uh, right. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, that, this, my fans is my family. This is the great thing about. Me not giving a fuck about what I say. I don't have to. I, whatever you want to leave, bitch, you. leave, leave. It's it is what it is. Like I'm, I'm not trying to. I'm not faking it no more. I'm. There's, I'm a, a, there's no better feeling than not giving a fuck. Yeah, it's a, a great I'm feeling. A great, I'm a great dude. I'm a great dude. And one of the things I think that people don't understand is being in a relationship is a sacrifice. And whether or not they let women realize it or not, it's a sacrifice made by men overall. It's it is our, our <laughs> I know I'm, that right, bro. I'm starting off heavy, right? Mm. You got um, that right. The nature of a relationship is that we we like how do I put it? I put it like this: what good is a man if he's in a relationship and his women, his woman and his children, his children are not fed and satisfied and this woman's not happy you right. we perceive it as as if we failed a failure yeah you're so, it's a failure so whereas uh you know the, a woman a woman will um fail miserably and somehow he didn't make me happy yeah just and then and then her 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 girlfriends go that's right girl he should he didn't pay attention to you so you're a strong he, woman he can't handle a strong can't handle, you just, independent uh Man. disruptive toxic woman Woo, bro it, it you know it, it's there's a stigma that comes with being a dude you know it, it and it's sad because i mean there, there's parts of it that makes you want to work hard as a dude like it makes you say okay well i have to be an earner this is because society has told me i have to be an earner like i cannot not be an earner so there's a part of me that that, that part of it is good in the sense of that most dudes got they shit together. Like they say, okay, I got to make sure that I have enough money to eat and have all that stuff. The downside to that is, is that, like you said, you can't fail. Right. You looked at as a man in the same sense, you can, you're not allowed to. And not, um, not just by you, but by your woman. As yeah. Well. Yeah. And, but, and the, but this is why I say a lot of, I tell cats, I mean, get with somebody that gives a fuck about you. I, I, I usually give, I usually give this advice when it comes to comedians, when it comes to picking a manager. I always say that as I say, find a manager that gives a fuck about you and yeah. not about what you can make because right. there's going to be ebbs and flows in this business. But this also applies to relationships. You want to get a partner, man, that that understands and cares about you and understands society is what it is. I mean, shit, these last two, three years put a lot of people to the test, right. a lot of relationships to the test. A lot of people had to reevaluate themselves and their relationships. So I at me now, I would not even tolerate being with someone that didn't understand the struggles of life. And if they wanted to only judge me based off of what I was bringing economically to the relationship, that would be a problem. That would be a huge problem. Well, you know, there's also a, a, a youthful spirit that kind of fucks all of this up because there's such a, a, a materialistic with with. You know, I mean, I hate to sound like an old dude, but social media, there's an emphasis on there's an emphasis on materialism and what you have and what you don't have and how how it looks for the gram, um, yeah. which is really interesting because it's nobody's happy if your life is on the ground. Nobody. I mean, first of all, most people ain't happy anyway. Let's be honest. I mean, most people don't can't have not figured it out anyway. But more so, as a uh, there's a there's a, a a situation where because of me too, because of women not being held accountable, and also 
the fact that young dudes are trying to make um you know they're trying to they're trying to they want you know they're mad because fish are swimming you know there's this there's, there's a nature of go, yeah you guys talk talk you talk that talk ty if i hit something you know you can you can no, that, that's, that's definitely another way to put it you know it, it's weird because when people we a lot of people are living their lives through social media which is not real life right. people, a lot of people don't want to understand that's not real that's what you have cut paste edited put filter you literally put filters on your life sure and a lot of people don't want to understand that everyone can seem like a star for a minute everybody can do that but yeah. that's not real life yeah, and the, the people who base them the, their relationships off of social media, you are already going into it with a problem. You ever yeah. see these videos, man? And I never understood why people, why women did it. Is that they'll show you the before, where they all want to make up and after? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm like when I first started seeing them, I was like, oh, okay, you just trying to let people see this is how I look without everything like that. Right. And then after a while, I was like, wait. You ain't gonna look like the after all the time. So why are you right? You know right. I mean? Right. Why but, would you even? Why would you even put it out there like that? But again, I think a lot of people have just accepted this, Dante. That that you will not be your real life. There's very few people that live their real life. Sure. In in, in the world, like you know what your life is at home. You sure. you know that's what your life is at home. But you are an adult. You're a grown man, and I don't put every, Dante's not going to put everything out there on. Social. I don't. I don't put enough, really. If I put uh, uh, more stuff in general or your personal life, just in general, I don't. I just don't do enough in general. Um, not the dope shit. Not the not dope shit. Not. I mean, I've never seen somebody. Nobody's posting. Yo, I cleaned the refrigerator today. You know, I thought the refrigerator. Like nobody's posting that. Um. And which is which is interesting because even in the even in the context of this this podcast, like um, when when my lady took my son to England, right? She snatched him, took him to England. I Wait, talked. Like, not oh, yeah. like no, you she your permission? Yeah, moved to England. Yeah, just oh, you did. know. Like I was, I it was supposed to be a vacation, and it was like I'm. I don't want to come back. I don't like New York. That type of thing. So, so um, but it was like, you know, when somebody tells you, I want to live in Brooklyn in a brownstone, and raise my kid, and then all of those, all of those boxes are checked, and it still ain't enough. You know, it, it, I, 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 I can't feel bad because. Right. You know, but I'm also I'm also not gonna jump through hoops either. Like I, you know, there's a there's a quality of living that would be if you were living here and you chose not to do that, and so there's a quality of living that you don't you don't get because you, you know. And what's interesting is I can't even say that without an argument, you know. But yeah. I've also but I've also learned not to say it anyway. And and uh, and this is an interesting thing. I, I think we've. We went through, as men, I think we went through a situation where we did no talking, right? Mm -hmm. And now we're doing too much talking. Um, and mm -hmm. what's really uh, interesting is when you see people and they're in a, in a situation where you, you just don't have to do it. Do you know what I mean? Like to argue with somebody about something that they're doing, they're making a choice. And I realize this, it's a weird thing because so many of these lessons I've learned throughout time and right. I apply these lessons. And then when it, there's always a blind spot where you, these, these universal principles are in place and then you don't, you, you, you forget, oh, this applies to that then. And I, so like back in, back in the days when I was a personal manager, right, I was a lady's personal manager and, uh, I used to tell people, I was like, yo, let me explain something to you. There is no, nobody, well, I shouldn't say nobody, but when you're about that pimping, right. <laughs> when that pimping is that pimping is that pimping, right? Um, you don't, you don't make anybody, uh, you don't make anybody do anything. They make a choice to. 
So I used to, I, I had this argument. I was funny. I was talking to Keith Robinson about this, and we had, he had this argument, which is weird because I, I was and he wasn't. And I said, women make men, women choose the pimp. Like women turn the guy out first because as, as a man, conceptually, you could never think that some woman would like you enough to fuck somebody else and then give you the money and give you the money. Like that's, the, I mean, like for a square dude to believe that that could happen is not even conceptually in the, in your understanding. Go ahead. You, you, something's on your mind. Well, just, just because there, it's funny because the initial idea of that relationship, when I would first hear about it, I could understand Keith's mindset of, well, no, you're making the woman do it. And then over the years, then you would see different documentaries, you would talk to different people, you'd hear different things, and you say, well, no, okay, I kind of see it this way now, because you you are, because you can, and my, I'm, I'm one of those people, like, I just, does it make sense or not? And to me, like, if I don't want to be in any situation at all, I am going to be. I'm just out. I'll right. find another city, I'll do whatever. But right. if you're right. choosing to do it, there's something to be said for what you're saying is like a woman is choosing that type of lifestyle. Um, Which is I, interesting because now, if you remove the exploitive nature of it, it's accepted. You, yeah, you know they're I mean? trying to legalize it in a lot Right, of right. So, so it's now it's like a woman, you know, a woman can, she could decide to be a sex, you know, this, this, which is, I, I mean, I've always thought that, especially. Look at OnlyFans. <laughs> When I right, right, right. When when it when it was you know because it was benefit, but you, but you also you also got chicks who are on OnlyFans that are making money, who got a dude who they're fucking that's not nearly making the motherfucking money that they think that they if they not paying him, he's reaping the benefits of it because she deems it so. Right, which is the same. It's the same dichotomy, and there's also dudes who clearly um who she's playing like she's she, there's right. there's still pimps tricks and hoes it's still yeah, yeah. nothing has changed the, the dynamic is the fact you know pe w women would say that the dynamic is is such that it um that it's changed now but it's it's never really changed now don't get me wrong there are i i knew dudes who was in the game who were abusive use yeah. drugs and coercion and violence and stuff but even that, I, I, you know, I, there's a book I read years ago called Power, and, and it talks about um, that power is perceived. It's not always, it's not always uh, a tangible thing. Right. The fact that you think you can't do things, people, it's perceived that somebody has power over you, as opposed to, as opposed to somebody physically having power over you. So when if if I'm, you know, if you, 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 or if you got a chick and she's working and she's on the streets, she could just leave. She could just disappear. She could right. literally turn tricks, get enough money, get on a bus, and you could never see her again. Oh. So that's what, what I always, that's what I always thought. I always thought they just make enough money and bounce when you're when you're tired. You of do that in a night if that's if that's what you're doing. And right. and I'm not I'm not condoning the immoral aspect of it, but I'm just saying. We do what we want to do. And what I try to do a lot of times, a lot of times I'll do consultations and a dude will be like, yo, my girl broke up with me. You know, what do I do? And I'm like, nothing. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Is, does she want to get back? Um, no. Uh, then, then did there's you, nothing you can do. Then there's nothing you can do. You can't, you can't force her, you, nor should you force her. Because even if, if she ultimately wants to leave anyway, that's going to happen anyway. Man, I've, I've never been... I mean, of course, uh, you, you love people, and you've been... Of course, you've been in love if you've been over a certain age. You would think that you love somebody. But what I've never understood is the concept of someone trying to make someone stay in a relationship that they don't want to be in. Mm -hmm. um, whether it be emotionally, physically, whatever, that just never made any sense to me. I, I, I don't, I don't get the concept of saying, no, I'm going to guilt you into wanting to stay because then like you just said, eventually that person, whether they're physically gone or emotionally gone, they will be gone.
they, not they, only they, that, but when you when you try to make them stay, you speed the process up. Yeah. You actually yeah. speed the process up because so it, it's Do you think funny, that people was, are doing that consciously or is a lot of that subconscious, you know, because I don't think people think of it as making somebody stay who doesn't want to. I have they want to leave. I have had consultations with people. Yeah. Where they say what? Call me up and ask me. And I said. They, or they how about this? They've called me up and said, I listen to your podcast all the time. I know. That you're gonna say I played myself and I da 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 da. They already know, but right. they they did it anyway because emotionally it was so emotionally in place, like in, they were in such a, a a bad spot in emotionally that they couldn't deal, they couldn't deal with um with the the whatever loss they deemed to be the case, which is always interesting because the loss that's perceived is never the loss that really existed. Right. So if you got a chicken, she's going, yo, I'm out, or she's being she's already being disrespectful. She's already it, checked it, out. It, this is not a pleasant situation. The loss that you think you're getting, you're, the loss that you think that you're subjected to is is potential. It's it's potentially what you think this relationship could be if she had a different personality if you had a different personality, if this was a different time, if they, if they, if that this was a different place, a time, a different, it's sort of like, yo, that girl would be bad if she lost a hundred pounds, had a different face and a different personality. She would be dope. Yeah. Um, she'd be a different chick. I'll tell you this, man. Like I have one, one example in my life that like I had someone that had to open my eyes to the situation. I was 19 I don't know, 18, 19, something like that. And this chick that I met in the military, uh, and I actually, I, I was a National Guardsman when we met, and then... Yeah, you go bragging all the, the time. <laughs> so thank, thank you for your, your service. Uh, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> so I ended up joining the regular army because I thought we would end up getting stationed together. There you go. Right. Ragging again. So now, <laughs> fast oh, forward to I'm in Texas at the time. You didn't time. want that by any grown ups, by the way, like a like a what? grown person. That idea, like I'll go together with her. We'll be stationed in the same place. Well, so no, no, because I've never again, done any military service. And I'll tell you right now, that ain't happening. Well, because the, the thing at the time, again, I'm 19. So in my head, I'm yeah. thinking this. The I'm, heart, I'm, right. Yeah, all yeah. I'm thinking is. Finger crossed and heart. That's all I'm thinking about. I right? just want to know if you asked anybody older at all, or you no, just went, "Yeah, that's the not problem." At all. That's, that's what, it. Yeah, which is why I said I have one example in my life yeah, yeah. of having that. Listen, we all right? do. We all, we had no idea. We never that's have no, any idea. You just you gotta know? hope you run into the right person to go. Nah, I and it's I too have doesn't had it. happen. Yeah, I still remember so, that bitch Stacy Diggs in fourth grade. She told me it's quick. It's oh quits, God. bitch. No. Right in the so, right in the schoolyard. <laughs> so, so I joined, and I honestly was very true to this girl. Like it was at the time, it was the only girl that I ever been true to as a, for a nineteen year old. Because I was, I had what was your what was your body count at nineteen? It was it was pretty decent for nineteen. I ain't gonna lie, man. I, I, like, I had we, give me a give me a ballpark. It's uh, casual. I'm doing quick math. I like the he, I like ties this. closing Carried his eyes. One. By the way, just so he's you doing know. that that he thing. Is, the Japanese. I would say I would say, I would say about twenty somewhere around there. Somewhere Good around. There. Ty Ty was doing the Doctor Strange where he closed his eyes <laughs> and he held his hands up and he was doing all the math of infinity. I'll pull it. What's that? What's that with the with the screen? The the uh, the Iron Man screen. <laughs> oh, the <laughs> Iron Man screen. Beep, up, 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 up. <laughs> I was doing all that shit. How but that's what, so it was definitely my whole to set all of it up to say with this one. I really was like, man, you know what? I'm into her. I want to be with her. I didn't, I didn't, I, I cut off all contact with everybody else. I wanted to be with her. So anyway, fast forward to she stationed in Korea. It was Korea and I was in Texas and we hadn't talked for a while. This is before really cell phones and all that shit. So right. you write letters, you write letters and you go to a pay phone. You, if you're not on a pay phone, you write a letter. The letters are coming less, still not clicking in my head. Uh, the phone calls are coming less. 
still not clicking. Even when we're on the phone, the phone calls, the talks, the conversations, very short, still not clicking with me because I'm so much here and I'm trying to be devoted to this situation. So she tells me one day, your heart, and we had to talk so for months, heart. and I am so, and I'm telling you ahead of time, I'm telling you both, hmm. I am very embarrassed about this moment in my uh, life. This, the 19, stop, Jesus. I know, just, just want to put it out there. So I, I she call, we finally talked after months of not talking. Uh -huh. She tells me that she's pregnant. And the very first thought in my head was, oh, mine? shit. I'm having a child. Oh my God. <laughs> the very first thought in my head. And it took my best friend at the time who happened to be stationed over there. He said, hey, man, we had a different, totally different conversation. And he had, it, and again, this is what I mean. Sometimes it takes a moment of clarity. And he said, hey, man, listen, bro, if I wasn't your friend, I, I wouldn't tell you this, but I just need you to understand something. He said, do the math, bro. Yeah. How many do months the, is she pregnant? Do the How Dr. Strange. Y'all seen each other? Exactly. Pull, do, do the thing, bro. Move your hands and around. It, but when he said that, right, it was, all right, back it up. And that, but I needed a moment like that to happen in my life. For me to say, OK, realistically, start looking at how relationships can be. Now, was it. Did you have the foresight to to see that or was it just so much pain that you just couldn't? I mean, I like how, well, how long I after did it? I couldn't settle? see it. I, but I'm saying well, after the fact, how long did it settle? Did oh, it, no, no. After the fact, it was, don't get me wrong, it still hurt. Of course it hurts. No, how, no far, how old were you when you like, I need to kind of look at this differently? Or did you, because at 19, a lot of times you think this is, this is so specific to you. Right. You I know? thought it was only me. I was, I was, it was right. only me going through this heartache. Right. And then you realize it's a part of life. But I think right after that conversation with my friend, and really just taking a step back, it was, I won't say it was instantaneous because there's still the residue pain of knowing that this person just fuck with somebody else and got pregnant. But the, 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 the common sense in me and was like, okay, bro, all right, you caught an L on that one. All right. Mm -hmm. It happens. Let's keep it moving. Mm -hmm. But it was something that when it had that moment happening to me, help shape a lot of stuff in my life because it made me think, okay, you can still love somebody. You could be into somebody, but to be unrealistic about where things can go is a problem. Yeah. 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 What I like, what I find interesting about that, the time that it finally clicked for you was a literal moment of logic in the sense of it was unrefutable math. Yeah. Right. The second the math hit, there was no that don't matter though. Yeah, I know, but at least for him, from on his end, it's something more tangible. Yeah. It's, it's harder to argue that. You can argue the justification of right. what you want to do, but you cannot argue that she cheated on you, right? You need Sometimes when you have that, that is the only thing that snapped you out was the logic of it. Everything else exactly. was pure emotion. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's why when you guys were saying earlier about like guys who try to force the situation to stay – or they, they use whatever manipulation. I'm like, man, if that person has checked out emotionally, yeah. you, you you have to just accept that. I mean, no one, no one wants to be hurt, bro. No one. Not a single person wants to go through heartache. But when that person is giving you signs or telling you literally they don't want to be there. Hey, man, you, you, there's a it's a hardness. To, it's a harshness to it. But you have to accept that and save yourself because otherwise you end up looking crazy and you may do some shit that's detrimental to your yourself. Sure, and and what's interesting is that the 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 next chess move on the board is so counterintuitive to what you would do in the first place, right? So, like, as soon as as soon as I like, uh, I mean, uh, I'm I'm not a horse fucking um. I remember I was fucking a comic. I won't. I won't say her name because I refuse to. Uh, but somebody we all know well. Um, just probably one of the most selfish people I ever met in my fucking life. But um, I remember uh, just not getting my dick sucked. Like all of a sudden, I wasn't getting my dick sucked. Like, and I was By like, the, "Yo, huh?" The person you're talking about? 
Yeah, yeah. I was just like we was we was rocking, and I mean we was we were still getting it in. Can but we it was just like, say it was Phyllis Diller? I mean, come on. It, why, why are we hiding the name? You right. Oh, I man. mean, she's, she's God, gone. Now, bro. God rest her soul. Um, she was almost <laughs> like Phyllis Diller. Um, uh, but she. Uh, she uh, so, you know what's funny, dude? Huh? Is this, as you said that, I'm sitting here thinking who you possibly could be talking about right now, and I think I know who you. Possibly. Oh man, now I want to know if you guess it give, right. Give can me you, a letter. First you, letter. L. Bingo. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> Bingo. All right. All right. Got it. <laughs> um, and uh which is is funny because it was like I was like, yo, what's up? It's no what's up with the blowies? The blowies. You know, there's no blowies? What's up? <laughs> so, oh, I, I you know, I'm just really not good at it. I, well, I'm I'm here to practice. You oh, know, I'm, I'm here willing to practice. To work. I'm willing to work on it. <laughs> listen, you you listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna sign up some... you up for racquetball. Uh, the you get the court all year. You can have yeah. for the next six weeks. You can have these this court. Your name. I'll just put your name down on all of these, right? <laughs> so it's oh well, you know I'm not oh, well well get it get it popping, right? And I was like, look, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna continue in a relationship where this is not happening. I'm I'm just not going to. I'm, I refuse to do that. I mean, this is, this is uh, a deal breaker. Um, this is non-negotiable. I um, mean, and I don't have a problem that you don't want to, but if you don't want to, I'll get somebody else to. I mean, right. I that happened with my with, with my wife. I was like, I'll I'll get somebody else. Right, right. And she was like, Well, I thought you would have took care of that already. And I was like. Damn. Fair enough. <laughs> say no more, fam. Say, say no, no more. more. <laughs> say less. What did they say? say Dante less. did one say of those less. things where his feet started running, the cartoon thing. There was just a cloud of smoke. Like, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> I gave finger. I gave finger guns. Fair enough. <laughs> All right, champ. <laughs> so so I remember uh, saying that, and it was like, oh, no, no, no. So the next time, the next time it, you know, so it picked up. Then it slowed down again, and I was like, look, we should just end this because you clearly don't like me, right? And she was like, well, no, it's, I love the way the lady, like, we do things. I love how we spend time together, da, 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 right? Um, and I was like, well, then well, I was like, then why is my dick not in your mouth? Like, I, like, I don't understand. Why do you have to be so vulgar? Because that's what the fuck, that's what the fuck, like, if you want... But Yo, weird. that person was really vulgar too. You want a straight mother? Go, go date Brian Regan. Like he don't curse. Like, like this. Like I'm not changing who I am because right, right. you're an intellectual bully, bully, and you want to put this in a perspective of that's all. Like this is. I'm not. This is clown shit. So, no, no. I think I love the relationship. I love the growth. I love it. I was like, well, understand something. The next time. Next time that happens, I'm not I'm not having this conversation again. I'm out. Sure enough, it was going good. Slow down. I was like, yeah, I'm good. It wasn't even like it's yo, it's no hard feeling. I ain't mad at you, but I'm good. Cause you're 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 doing what you want to do. Like this, this is the nature of the relationship you want. This, you and I'm not a. I don't eat pussy. I'm a pussy eater. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I like I don't do it for you. I'm an artist. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I'm, I'm a. I'm a. I'm, I do interpretive pussy eating. You know. So like don't. So it, it's like it's more than reciprocated, and in a sense. But if you don't want to do this, and it's you know what I I've said this to dudes who I've done consultations. Like, yo, it just feel like this. If we could just get back to where I go. Let me ask you something. I said, let's say you dating some chick. All of a sudden she goes, you know, I really, I really don't. Um, I really have always kind of been by and I realized that I'm I, I just like women. As a man, you you wouldn't argue that. Right. You know what I'm saying? You go, well, clearly you want something other than me, and who am I to stop you from? So there's a level of empathy in that. 
mm-hmm. to let somebody go because they've changed or they've grown or maybe they wrecked. There's a re- there's a realization of who you are. So you wouldn't, I, I go, you wouldn't go, yeah, but I could, you know, I mean, I could, I, I could pull my nuts up and you can, <laughs> you know I mean, like, <laughs> and we can scissor it like you, you, you wouldn't, you would just understand that. Oh my! <laughs> just like, you know, it, like, this guy's got a long pussy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but okay, but you yeah. would you would accept that in right, a real right, right. way because there's a contrast. But the same thing is if if you're looking for some dude, if you're looking for a dude that's uh that's gonna give somebody a good talking to. When he's disrespectful, I'm, I'm not. I'm gonna smack you in your mouth, dog. If you disrespectful, you gonna get smacked in the mouth. And and, yeah. and if you want to do, you want to do with a tuxedo, you know, with tails and a top hat. Go, I get it. I'm not that dude. I'm okay with me. I get it that it may not be up to your part. Right. That doesn't diminish my value. It just no, means what, that we ain't right. But what you can't have is someone criticizing you and demeaning you because you don't fit that role and that's not yeah. who you are because especially that especially when you a goofy bitch you goofy yeah. as shit you don't even got yo you a goofy bitch like stop i would i would say and this is this is why i think once dudes realize their own value i think some women gravitate towards that and they you know they 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 appreciate that and those are the dudes that they want to be all around. women the problem is Everybody who's a everybody who's a is a good date is not necessarily a good girlfriend or a good wife. Right. Like you know, you know how many people don't know the difference between that so, someone that you date versus somebody that you hang out with versus somebody that you marry versus you know. And when you get to that point, this is what I mean by like when you know as a dude what you want. And, and I think I told you this before. I, I did tell you this before. The best thing I ever did was spend time by myself. And once I did that, I was like, okay, now I know what I want. Now I know what I, I know, not only do I know what I want, I know what I'm willing to do. Yeah. And when you don't know those two things, it's, it's hard. Like a, a, a friend of mine did a show and he said, he said he was, a, he was surprised at how many current guys that are dating have a hard time finding women. And I said, I'm not surprised because a lot of people have their relationships are here. A lot of their relationships are on the phone. A lot of relationships are very, you know, swipe left, swipe right and all that stuff. So it's it's hard to find somebody that really fits marriage material because not everybody's marriage material. Sure, sure. Not everybody's marriage material. Most, most are not. Yeah. So, Which is the, the reason for 50% of divorces, because most are not. And that <laughs> and that goes for both sides, men and women. Yeah. That that's both ends. But I will say this: a guy will will put into like 80% of all divorces women file. Because it's probably I would even agree that it's probably more now now with social media because they think because of some because somebody somebody is ready to get some ass that they ready to marry you and that's just not you know that's some that's just not true it's not bro think about how many people you knew especially in this business from years ago that you could see yourself laying next to and having a conversation with walking down the street just talking, sitting there watching a movie and just just being in silence, even in silence with each other. You yeah. can't do that shit with everybody, no, bro. No, you pro- a lot of times you can't do that with nobody. Like there's it's more nobody than it is everybody. You know what I mean? It's more of a chance that you never find somebody that you like that much. I mean, I mean, I even have I've even been out with you know, women who are kind would do anything for me. But I, I just don't like you like that. Like yeah. it, and then all the doing all the right shit. Understand where your place is, and I, I just don't dig you like that. I think. Do you, other- do you probably do those? But there's no pressure from them, though, right? They're, they're not coming. Well, this is always pressure. Really? 
It's always. I mean, when is it not pressure? When does a woman not tell you what she wants? Yeah, I, I guess probably the better question is: is when do you stop giving a fuck about the pressure? I I don't <laughs> I don't never give a fuck. For about Dante, the it was the seventh grade, I think. <laughs> it was that time. bitch. Stacey it, was, Diggs. it was after the chick. It was after the Stacey chick told him fourth. after fourth grade. Stacy Diggs. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it oh, took God. it took a little longer than that, but it it was um, you know, I think it was like after college. I really and I I I give less of a fuck, but now I I think I give more of a fuck. Like I, I care more than I did when I was younger. The the the, the but the but the empathy is, dog. You don't want to do this. That's not what you want to do. What I need from you, you can't give it to me. And if you could give it to me, you don't want to. And I'm okay with you not yeah. thinking I'm worth that. I'm okay with you not being capable of it. But the fact is that you lying about who you are, and I'm not lying about who I am. Right. I'm telling you the truth. But if if we're already in some bullshit, like we already, if we, you, like... What is going on? This is, and I think what happens is, it's the, you know, them gray hairs in your beard is what teaches you that time is the commodity and a yeah. waste of time with some bullshit that ultimately is going, it's going to pan out the way it's going to pan out anyway. You could, you, it, we already on this road. This is route, route 66. We know where it goes. Man, let me tell you something, bro. So the other night, I had a night free. My my wife was uh she went and she was hanging out with some girlfriends and I had a night free in LA. And I was like, okay, what do I want to do tonight? Where do I want to go? And there's a spot that I go to, uh, it's called the Well. It's in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I've heard little, of it. You know, a little small loungy place. I, it's my perfect spot because it's yeah. dark. I play the jukebox, I sit at the bar, sit my tequila, that's it. Uh and I say, okay, all right, I could either go there or I could go to this spot in Malibu. Uh, where you know, but I know it's going to be a lot of people there. Right. So in my head, I'm rationalizing how can I have the most peaceful night, right? Being out, and everything that I thought about was shit that I never thought about in my twenties. In my twenties, I'm like, where's the hot spot? Where's the music going to be? Where's where? it going to be the most popping? Yeah. Me now, I'm like, how can I get to a place where no one's going to fucking talk to me? I can have good music playing. And just sip my tequila. That's all I want to do. And knowing that that's my comfort zone, hey man, it eliminated a lot of shit in my life. I knew that a, a while ago that this is the type of person that I am. So when I see people that are still out here trying to figure out, oh man, I want, I'm this, I want to do this, or I want to be around this person, and you're, I mean, goddamn, 50, 45, 50 some years old, I just don't understand that because you're wasting time when you can just take time to just sit back and think for a second. I met somebody yesterday, bro, and she's a very sweet lady. I'm not gonna say she she was very nice, but she's in her late 40s and she fucks around. But she sounds like she doesn't want to fuck around anymore. Mm -hmm. But she still fucks around. And as she's talking to me, I'm sitting there thinking like, you do know what you're categorized as mm. by cats. You, the fact that the way you rock. You, you know what I'm saying? Like nobody's you, nobody's rocking with you, dog. So it goes back to what you said a second ago. Like and you 48. It's like it's, this is and I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to say it to her because I'm like, I mean, she's sweet, but I'm like, the way you live in your life and the choices you making at 48, that's gonna be a problem for you to find somebody. That's gonna take you. You're not. You're not gonna. First of all, you think that you think because somebody wanna somebody wanna fuck you, you think because somebody wants to bed you that they wanna be with you, and that's just not true. Don't get me wrong. It's God's fault because we will, you know, like women will fake an orgasm, but a guy will fake a relationship. Like <laughs> he will fake a marriage, <laughs> you know. So, wow. so <laughs> wow, I never thought of it in that terms. Fake a whole marriage. We're, oh, fake man. a marriage. I faked yo. all those. Oh, I faked all those smiles. Every we pump, while we was pumpkin picking. I faked <laughs> all. Little, I went to the lead, little league game. I I I acted like I liked my son. I didn't. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> 
You know, all those brunches. Oh, all that those happened. brunches. That, my older sister. Yeah, let's, oh, get, my, let's get mimosas. My all them couples, sister, all them couples brunches. Yeah. I think all them couples brunches. All Dog, of them. My, my, the last one of them. My, my, young, my youngest nephew, he has what I call ghetto twins. Because his daddy got a, they, there's two kids, they, they, two brothers. Same, same age. age. See, that's also known as Irish twins, but that's a different thing, uh, though. Irish okay. twins are from the same mom, where you get her pregnant immediately after the fir after like the first one, so they're oh, born man. in the same like calendar year. You're it, there's so much of the fact that you get to the point when you start to understand that time is the commodity, right. and once you realize that time is the commodity, then it's like let's let's get this shit flushed out, hmm. or let's not. Like I'm not mad at you if we don't fit the problem is when you are insecure you take the fact that somebody is not your type personal you take it as a personal affront to right. who you are as a boss you don't like me I, well, don't, I, don't... I think i think uh speaking from my end i think what happens is sometimes you think why wasn't i enough to to uh for this person to like me and you don't realize that it's not always you like it's right. not why wasn't I enough? Why sometimes it's just that person didn't take care of themselves. How about this? I would say ninety percent it's not you. I mean, first of all, it, let's if you think about the trauma, like mm. just in general. First of all, first of all, we, we, what I think, and and this is how the show has evolved with time, is I would have never taken into consideration the trauma that somebody goes through that makes them act the way that they act that that not even to taking the, the fact of considering that what when i get a consultation and i'm trying to guide a dude the first so I, I start asking him what's the relationship of what's the relationship with your father what was the relationship with your father and your mother like what did you see as right. as what love is and relationships and and nine times out of ten it's some kind of warped off the wall shit because let's be honest just i mean we I mean, most people, most people still are not sophisticated enough to be self-aware, like self-awareness is a is a rare thing. And and uh, if you're not self-aware, you can't fix it. But just being you got to start with self-awareness. You know, you know how hard that is for a lot of people? Yeah, it, it's it, it, impossible for a lot of people. It is when you it's, it's weird because you can't it's hard to tell somebody about themselves. And I always, I always, I would say this to um, to bring it to comedy for a second. I would say one of the hardest things for a comedian to be is honest with themselves. Yeah. But it's one of the most important things. Yeah. Because to be you funny, will, you got to be honest with yourself. Yeah. That exactly. So, so you walk into a room, and you can you if you're honest with yourself, you can tell what a real laugh is versus a chuckle. You can tell whether your material is original. You can tell whether your material is something that you stole, blah, blah, blah. And as, as long as you're honest with that, then I feel you have a better chance of being a better comedian because you will learn and you will want to learn. Same thing with relationships. You say, okay, well, what are my faults? What, what are my faults? What are the things that I like? And what are the things that I'm bringing to the table? Because sometimes, you know, we're, we're taught as dudes we have to bring everything to the table. Right. We talk. We, we got to bring everything. We got to bring looks. We got to bring stamina. We got to bring money. Look that up. Look that oh, up, man. Harry. Look. Let's do this again because I keep doing this thing. Which Ty, this is the thing that I've done several times. Look up the word. The word the compromise. Definition of compromise. Yeah. This isn't. This isn't. I, and I and I keep. We keep talking about this because I realize everybody's not hearing it, and I'm really the listeners. I'm really trying to embed this in their head yeah you it, up it, i'm pulling it, it up here uh compromise to be made of oh wait hold on Com no that's comprise sorry so give me one second my fingers fucked up uh compromise compromise here we go uh settlement or differences by arbitration or consent uh something uh concession is something derogatory hold on that's not the one here we go i'm fine to come to a, an agreement by mutual concession to find or, yeah by mutual ahead, concession that's mutual concession concession means that i give up things and you give up things yeah now in a relationship your, your chick is mad at you concession doesn't mean i do what you want and you shut the fuck up 
That's right. that's not concessions. Concession is that's extortion. You, that's it, right. It yeah. is extortion. Yeah. So <laughs> so uh, it it's it compromise means that we both don't get all of what we want. Right. We get some of what we both get some of what we want. And I, what I what happens is guys want um they want they want concessions. They they they're willing to give all the concessions just for peace of mind. So like you, you said, it, it, it's, 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 it's concessions, not extortion. And you know, it's funny. I don't know if you saw the, the, the rock and roll hall of fame, the, the induction no. this, uh, this past week or whatever. Anyway. So they were in, uh, inducting um, Jimmy jam and Terry Lewis. Okay. Right? And so they're giving the, their speech and the whole the one thing that stood out about his their speech jimmy jam says uh he says man we've been working together 40 years and he says we've never had an argument he said we've had uh disagreements but we've never had an argument and he said i never want he said i never want to win at something that he loses at and I, that stood out to me so much. He said, yeah. we've been working together 40 years and I never want to win something that he loses at. Right. right. And I said, God damn, that's pretty. That's that's because their, friendship, their their partnership. They built this empire. Based it's a great. On it's that. a great relationship. <laughs> See what I'm saying? It, it's there's no if, if it wasn't because, for the dicks. Yeah. Yeah. If it was. For the <laughs> Wasn't for the dicks and the if anal, like, that would be great. Like dicks. Yeah, it would be great. It would be, it would work out, but alas, but it it's, doesn't. it's like it was that so relationship is so good. You go, ah, could I fuck with the dicks? <laughs> like, you think about it, you try I to think about it, you give it some thought. You're like, ah. I just have very, very, uh, a deep it's not gonna work. <laughs> Let's just say the quote was very poignant. Ah, Jesus, uh, you know what else is poignant? A dick, pretty poignant. It's, it's pretty poignant, Ty. <laughs> And that's the problem. As soon as I said it, I knew I fucked up. As soon as I no, said it, it's nothing worse than goofy. Than, <laughs> goofy shit. than your business part and looking back and, and going, ah, this is not really working. Man, I, wish it, I wish it. I wish it would. Let's just make another like, out. I, mean, I wish. I, wish I mean, it would. It, we can only world. dream. We can only dream. In another world, this would work out. But at last, we gotta go home but, to our like, miserable wives. <laughs> <laughs> but do you see what I mean? It's like that. But that part. It's such if people if more people thought like that, yeah, a lot pe a lot of people's relationships, whether it be personal, business, whatever, would be so much better. It, I'm telling you, ever since I've heard I heard him say that, it's stuck in my head because I'm like, God damn, that because that doesn't mean that your partner is always right. It doesn't mean that they're always wrong. But if you if you truly care about that person and you want to make it work, this is only in instances where you want to make it work. That's something that you should always have in your mind that, OK, this is what you would like me to do. This is what I would like you to do. If we care about each other, we will figure out a way to make this work for both of us. I'm a firm believer in that. Now, I don't believe in that mentality of I get everything and you get nothing and vice versa, because eventually. That's but we never but we never do. That's not the nature of men anyway. The when we go in, we know we giving it up. We know we giving something up. We we go in understanding that there this is I like this chick this is a compromise we're not under no no uh Delusion. under uh, under perception that we're not going to make sacrifices we walk into it knowing that the problem is that a lot of women are not accountable for the fact that things are going to change for them and that they are expected to do certain things. Who do you put that on, huh? That women aren't aren't aren't. Who do you put that on? You put that on the women. I think it's the nature. I think it's instinctually. Um, I, 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 I mean, I think we would go. I know what we're saying what is it? Social media. It's, it's the the. But here's here's Let's, the no, thing. But people were unhappy in marriages long before the internet and social media. It's right. just, the difference it's just, was they stayed. Yeah. That was the difference. But here's mm -hmm. here's the thing. Your you want your wife to love your kids. Your your offspring is your that's your immortality. I mean, I'm not a religious. I'm an atheist. So for me, more, my immortality is moving my genes to the next generation. And if I don't do that, 
then I die. Then I really die. Not in, I mean, we all die a physical death, but moving my genes along is really what's about. Right? So this is why this is something that's instinctual with all animals, all living things. Right. Moving your genes to the next generation means that you 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 you're immortal. It's at least your part of being immortal. So right. you want I so instinctually the mother of our at least the mother of our species has to love the kids more than they love you. That has to happen. I can see that. And your responsibility is to love her as much as she loved them kids, or at least if not love her, at least be willing to sacrifice and keep her safe in, in, in the context of whatever that needs to be something. And I, I, Corey, I shout out to Corey Holcomb. Corey Holcomb said, I saw some interview he did and he says, look, he's like, yo, if a bitch don't respect you, 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 you like he said, when you in these streets, you are in danger. And if you got a chick who's not willing to submit to you and do what you say, right? Then then I can't keep you safe. So it's like I'm aware because this is the world I live in. You know, I live in this world. Your 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 world is your world. It's not just you. I I'm required to keep you safe. So if I see something breaking, I, it's here's the thing. I went to I, I told this story a couple of times. A uh, young lady got me tickets for the Javante Davis fight. Javante when he fought Romero, right when he knocked Romero out at at the Barclays, right. And I'm in the. I'm in the Barclays, right? And shout out to Baltimore because Baltimore is hood as shit. Yeah. So you in the Barclays, the Barclays is hood. This Brooklyn all day, right? And and Javante's from Baltimore, so hit a lot of Baltimore was here, right? Oh, I drove up. They made. But it. let me tell you something. It was seamless. The, it the like hood, we had crab legs in there. Dog, the hood factor. Was you like if this was oh, if you God. made a Frankenstein between Baltimore hoods and Brooklyn hoods? Oh no, yeah, that's not a good combination. The only you you would it would be seamless. Would be no stitches. You you would just know which side if you got the head from Baltimore because he say Baltimore. That's the only way you would know because it's it's ghetto. It's hood. It's ratchet. Yep. Mm. So I'm watching this unfold. Nobody's sitting in the seats. Now we on the, we a step up from the floor, like the tickets is like two grand, but the floor yeah. is four to four between four and six tickets. A fight breaks out. Now if you you down there with your, there's a lot of BBLs, there's a lot of Louis Vuitton, a lot of ice. Everybody just watches brightly, just rollies, right? Fur coats, extensions, the whole deal. A whole lot of whole lot of Yeezys, a lot of Proud of sneaking. So if you fighting in, if you scrapping and you lose a Prada sneaker, you feel what I'm saying? It's like this this is the kind of ratchet it was. So fight broke up. It was well, about fight, 30, 35 motherfuckers was rocking. This was before or after during the main event. This was before the main event. Okay. So I already knew that this was they're rowdy. They're funky. rough and rowdy. I could and I could feel because I've been in that. I've been shot at. I've been stabbed. I've been, like I could feel this. It, I just and and it's you know everybody around us isn't cool, but you could just feel that hood element. So I said, the Javante Davis fight goes. Yeah. So I says to the chick, I said, listen. Soon as this dude, because you could, I said, soon as Javante knocks this dude out, we are out. I need you to put your coat on now. Yeah. Right? So it's, you know, they feel it. And I, boom. I seen the rubber legs. I was like, it's over. Let's go. Let's go. We out. <laughs> right? We watching. He's on. The, they, they counting him out. They still counting him out. We're watching it on the monitors on the way out. As it should be. Javante is on the ring, on the turnbuckle. Ah! <laughs> Right, we 
we on the first floor. We stop a little bit to see. Definitely count. Boom, we out. Get out of the Barclays, right? We walk, get about three blocks up, right? Waiting for the Uber. Pa 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 pa. The, the shots. She goes. How, how did you know? How did you not know? I was <laughs> like, look, unaware. But it ain't Just there. It, it's it's not, not the for them to. Be, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm there for. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm there for. People are running across. This, Gunshots ringing out like active shooter. Cops is rolling. We th we six blocks away already. But Man. It, it it's 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 so when you say who's who's faulted it, yeah, all right. Oh. Dude, if you say, you know what, I will tell you what, let's let's um no Patreon, but it's six uh -huh. o'clock. We're five right, to right. six, but yeah, yeah. So um, if you if you go if you're going yo. This is what my job is. I'm supposed to live in this space. You not. But if you be like, yo, don't be telling me what to do. I So Corey was like, he was like, if I tell you come and you, he goes, I don't, he said, he said I don't deal with, he said, I deal with $200 chicks. Where when I give a chick $200, it's because she need it. It's not because she wanted. She need two hundred dollars, right? He goes, but if you a two hundred dollar chick, I I can't take you seriously because if somebody got three hundred, then you go with them. I'm yeah. out, right? and I get it because you got to do what you got to do because your life ain't right, man. You and I know I know you got to get wrap it up here, so so I'll keep it quick. But I'm gonna say this, man. And this is the, the part that comes with the maturity and knowing what it is you're willing to deal with. Right. It, a lot of cats still think that they can deal with any type of female, and you can't. And it ain't nothing wrong with you that. You can. It's just. Well, no, it depends on how you want to deal with them. Again, like, you know what? I watched it. Uh, I guess it was Jay Z's birthday yesterday. Uh -huh. yeah. Was it yesterday? It was Jay Z's birthday. So, anyway, yeah. they were playing all his old videos and shit. So, two thoughts in my head. The first thought was, I'm watching uh, the Big Pimpin' video. Uh -huh. Like, I wonder if Jay-Z look at those videos and be like, God of damn. Of course. Jay-Z so running around looking at, he's buying Basquiat's. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the you feel what I'm saying? It, the other thought was the, in his Girls, Girls, Girls video. And he talks about all these different types of yeah. videos. And I said, damn, that's right. You look, there's so many different spectrums of chick that you can be with that's attractive. There's yeah. an attractive... A hood chick. There's an attractive upscale oh, yeah. chick. But you as an individual, once you get to a certain point in your life and you say, okay, man, this is what I'm comfortable dealing with. Yeah. This is what I know I want to be around. Right. Once you figure that shit out, yeah. I think it's a lot easier. It's the motherfuckers that are still trying to kind of dip and dab and all. And, uh, no, but no, no. In, in reality, the reality is the reason why they're dipping and dabbing is because they haven't grown past the pimping video, the big pimping video. Yeah. They're still at the big pimping video. It's a lot of dudes is is where they got out of the joint and now they, they still wearing the FUBU sweatshirt they was wearing when they went in. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. They got on British Knights and uh, <laughs> <laughs> like throwing the car can throwing the car can belt buckle in there too. They got a car hard jacket on and uh, <laughs> and the 40 below Tim's that right, is right, like right. You know, I get it. So I, I, you know, the thing is, you gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta move up. And if you're not moving up, but, but I, one thing I, I, I've also, what is also where I would normally get angry for the stupidity. Now I just understand it. I like, I get it. I get it. You can't, you can't like, if you, you can't like, help it, you don't know. Yeah, if you got a comics been stealing jokes for thirty five years. How do you stop? Right. How, how do yeah. you wake up? How do you wake up and stop? If nobody's when, corrected that behavior. You're gonna do what? Even what if it is, successful. it's too. It's too late. Yeah. It's. Yeah. It's like it's like you Shawshank. You <laughs> you get out of jail and you then don't know yourself life. from the rafters. You, you don't know any other way to live. You're institutionalized. Todd, <laughs> Todd, yo man, thanks for doing this, bro. Um, thank you both. Get you back on again, bro. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks, hey, man. And um, if I don't see you guys, uh, I, I was have... trying to get back there. I was trying to get back there for the holidays, but man, them hotel prices are ridiculous. We'd be around. So, 
So uh, I'll see. I'll be in. I'll be in England anyway. So. I'll, oh, good. Know, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Going to see my little man. So that's what's up. Enjoy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, man. Thanks for having right, me. Thank you for doing it, Ty. Appreciate it, man. No uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, if you love the show, you can always support us by uh, going over to patreon.com slash manschool202. That's where we do, we do all the bonus content. Uh, and we release one every week right after this uh, regular episode comes out. So there's an extra episode today. It's just going to be me and Dante uh, chopping it up and answering a little bit of listener mail and go over, going over some techniques. So go over and join us. Patreon.com slash manschool202. Uh, you can follow my social media at Harry Terjanian for everything. And also I do relationship consultations. Advice from Harry at gmail.com if you want to uh, find out rates and set up an appointment. And Dante, you do relationship consultations. You can go where? DanteNero.com. Click on consult. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. I love y'all, man. Thank you for listening. Peace.